Hello, and welcome to The Last Romantic, the internet show that discusses what it's like to be a comic book fan in this cynical, dark, evil world. I am your host, The Fat Mantis. Now, I'm sure you've all heard the rumors that Marvel Studios is considering none other than everyone's favorite psychopathic actor, Shia LaBeouf, to play Iceman in an upcoming X-Men movie. Now, it could easily be a lie or a rumor. There's a lot of that going around. Or it could be the type of stunt casting that the MCU is notorious for. Sometimes it can go either way. It's actually my theory that they are going to announce the rest of the cast or big name castings for X-Men the weekend of DC fandom so they can steal DC Comics internet thunder. Stop there. Twitter trending dead in its tracks as the MCU has been known to do. Now I'm gonna assume it is actually the truth and I'm gonna cast the rest of this movie. I'm jumping on this bandwagon, I'm gonna bandwagon and I'm gonna finish this casting. So why don't you join me right now? So Iceman, Shia LaBeouf. Next, Phoenix. Rachel Evan Wood of Westworld fame. Now we've seen in Westworld that she knows how to play basic <laughs> sweet <laughs> or psychopath all in one character, which is what it takes to play an actual good Jean Grey. I think she has what it takes. I just hope they give her a better die job than they did the original Jean Grey back in 2000. Next, Cyclops, Yahya Abdul Mateen. Yeah, that was not a joke. I actually think that he has the qualifications. One of the most important qualifications that I would say both Captain America and a Cyclops actor needs to have is he needs to be someone you would follow into battle, a believable leader. And I believe Yahya Abdul Mateen has it. But also, the reason why I'm doing this type of casting, I'm not all about the, the racial bending or whatever. However, in order to separate this version of Cyclops from all the other white boys who have just blended in together, I think they need to mix it up a little. And I absolutely think that he should be Cyclops. Not only that, don't you want to see these two make out? I know I do, and I would certainly pay for it. Next up, Beast. I am gonna go with Jeffrey Wright. I know he is already Commissioner Gordon. However, it seems that people are allowed to play multiple roles of superheroes across the board nowadays. And when you see him talk in Westworld, doesn't he seem like he is the most intelligent human who ever existed? That is the major quality that the Beast needs to have. Next, Archangel. Now I'm saying Archangel as opposed to Angel because if they are casting a 30 year old Iceman, I'm assuming the X-Men have been adventuring for many years and they've been covering up their adventures, possibly through Professor X's psychic abilities, mm -hmm. mind wiping people, just a theory. So I'm going to assume they've had many adventures and it is possible that Angel was in his past. We need someone in order to play this role to be both pretty boy blonde haired Angel at some points in flashbacks, but now play a dark sinister person. Who better than Bill Skarsgård? Yeah, that's right, Pennywise himself. He can creep us out the way Archangel does on his most, on his best days in the comic books. Now, now that we've cast the original guys, let's see what the new Genesis crew is. Now, I'm not gonna cast all the ones, I'm gonna cast the X-Men that we're most likely to see in an X-Men film. Now, we're gonna start with S Storm for Black Panther 2, and I am actually gonna go with Jade Ashite. I have probably, completely mispronounced that. Now, she's an actress you probably don't know. She is from It's Bruno and has been in multiple episodes of Billions and um, also in uh, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. That's right, shows you are probably not watching, but she's out there. She is a very beautiful, black, dark-skinned Nubius goddess, and that is what we need for our storm. Colossus, I feel like we need to stick with Stevan Kupikic. That, I mispronounced that as well. He's an Eastern European actor, and you know him from the Deadpool play, uh, movies, playing none other than Colossus. I think we should stick with that version of Colossus. I think it's kind of funny, and let's face it, Colossus has never been a main character, so. Next, Rogue, Kaya Scalidiario. I'll probably mispronounce that as well. Uh, once again, my apologies. Now, I've been a fan of hers since Skins. That's right, I've been watching her since she was a teenage actress. And I've seen her do multiple things all over the place. And really, she has such amazing range. I think it's time that she actually got a franchise or a good role or something like that. She, she needs to make her name and this is, could possibly it. I think she would do a great Southern Belle. Shadowcat, otherwise known as Kitty Pride. 
I would like to cast Maya Hawk from Stranger Things. She may be 22, but she plays the most believable teenage girl I have ever seen in my life. Nightcrawler, Remy Malik. That's right, give him pointy ears, paint him blue, and throw him out an airlock, because he's ready to do this spacewalk. Oh yeah. Next, I want to point out why I am not casting Magneto. So my thoughts are, we Magneto is completely overplayed. We've seen this dude time and time again, and it is just kind of getting boring at a certain point. And my, my theory is that if they've been adventuring for many years, it is possible they have already dealt away with Magneto. They've benched him the way they do on comic books. Like they probably have him in a superhuman prison or they turned him into a child and f is forcing him to relive his childhood so that they can raise him as a good person. Or they've mind wiped him and convinced him he's a good person. Um, or one of the many other cockamamie ways the X-Men get rid of Magneto without killing him. However, my idea is that if we're gonna do Rogue and uh, Rogue and a, uh, a Captain Marvel 2, I think it would be a good idea to have Mystique's version of the Brotherhood of the Evil Mutants. In my opinion, she's one of the best X-Men villains that there ever has been. Now, honestly, she is the type of person who, she's almost like a Sarah Connor, but for the forces of evil. She orchestrates the murder uh, and assassinations of senators that she doesn't like. She was able to infiltrate S.H.I.E.L.D. at their highest order, pretending to be one of their agents for years, and actually gave the Brotherhood of the Evil Mutants government sponsorship and badges where they renamed themselves Freedom Force and, and were such a problem for the X-Men. The X-Men had to fake their death and hide for several years down in Australia, pretending to be dead because they couldn't deal with the thunder they were bringing. Mystique, if, if done correctly, should be a duplicitous, evil, witch, very competent leader. And I think the person who needs to play this is none other than Sarah Paulson. Let's face it, like a shapeshifter, Sarah Paulson has the ability to play anyone, literally anyone in the world. I would love to see her be a truly evil, sinister Mystique, and also the uh, foster mother of Rogue. That would be very, very fascinating. Professor X. Who can possibly play Professor X? Now the MCU has a tendency to always cast an OG actor, someone who's won awards or has been in it for a long time, someone who's established, showing that they can still have what it takes and it gives a legitimacy to the very essence of the MCU. I think they're constantly repeatedly doing this. It has get, made their movies a little more legit than superheroes movies used to be. So I am gonna go with John Malkovich. Now he is another one of those actors that I think could literally play anyone he wanted in the universe and I would love to see him play Professor X. That would be awesome. And finally, Wolverine, who honestly, in, I really would hope that they would just have an extensive search of no-name actors and just find the perfect person who completely exists as Wolverine, because I don't know a single actor who can really actually pull it off to the extremity that it needs to be. However, this is an MCU movie, and they're not going to do that. So if I had to go with anyone, it would have to be James Corburn, circa 1959. But since I can't squeeze 1.21 gigawatts out of my fusion pack today, time travel is not possible. So my real pick is Jake Picking of Hollywood fame. That's right, he's animalistic in all his nature. He's stalky and he can certainly fight. I feel like he can play the tough guy. The only thing that's happening is the height in issue. And now I am offering an interesting take. Remember The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings or whatever all those movies were? They digitally altered and made our actor shorter, and I don't see why we can't do that with Wolverine. We just make him one foot shorter and it'll be fine, because, to be honest, it is slim pickings going through these short actors. None of them, heck, all the, tough guys, all the tall actors aren't even tough. So what I'm saying is Jake Picking, I think he's, he's my pick. I really think he can pull this off if people just give him an opportunity. I, I would be into it. I would be into it. A lot of these other ones are people are just, they'll show, say any famous person. Brad Pitt, Keanu Reeves, whoever, so-and-so. Danny DeVito. Okay, stop that. Just stop it, okay? Let's. But honestly, I would rather the no-name, the le a legendary no-name. Almost like, a, almost like a, a Mark Hamill or something. Pulled out of nowhere. Or diamond in the rough. So there you have it. Those are my castings. Who would you cast in any of... Oh, and who would you cast for Destiny? If we have true comic book mystique, we need true... She needs to be partners with Destiny. Where is, what, where is old lady Destiny? Anyway, 
Who are your picks? Who would you pick? Where did I get it wrong? Where did I get it right? Please let me know in the comments. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And keep tuning in to Voice of the Fat Mantis for more comic book updates, fun shenanigans, and all that. Until next time, ciao for now.